Coming up, create blood-curdling screams with a kitchen cup. Solve the mystery of the curious clicking radio. Make your own marshmallow catapult. Or fabulous flowers that really float. Welcome to the show where fun is the name of the game. And no game is quite as much fun as getting your friends together for the winter season's first sled competition. We're practicing for the great annual neighbourhood sled competition. It's me and Tanner versus Gabrielle and Cheyenne. <laughs> Off we go! Whoopee! Each year we have two events. One for the first team to the bottom of the slope and another race to see which team can go furthest. Time for team strategy meetings. This year the stakes are really high. Grandma has donated two jars full of monster jelly beans for the winners. Trouble is, Tanner and I want to win a jelly bean jar each. That means winning both races. Hmm, is it best to have a heavy sled or a light one? Hmm, I know, let's experiment. Come on, Tanner. This fish pond is looking kind of dull. I think my fish would really love some water lilies. I know, I can make some. My flowers will have eight petals, but I'll start by drawing the round bit in the middle. Good, a perfect circle. Now, I find the centre by measuring halfway. And I draw a straight line through the centre from one side of the paper to the other. Then I do that three more times. Then I draw star shapes so that I have eight triangles on the outside of my circle. Now each of my stars is going to be a petal. I just cut carefully around my whole circle until I've got eight petals. Then I just fold the petals into the centre. All eight of them. And hey, a cute little octagon shape. That's one done. Now I'm going to make enough to really decorate my fish pond. There, a bowl full of beautiful water lilies. OK, fish, here I come. Now it's water lily launch time. Here it goes. There you go, fish. Your own flowers to swim with. Look, the petals are unfolding. As Lara's lilies float, water is drawn into the tiny empty spaces between the cardboard fibres. This is called capillary action. The water causes the cardboard fibres to swell. As they swell, the petals unfold. Eventually, they completely open up and the lily floats on the water just like a real one. I'm going to put them all in because they look so beautiful. What do you think, fish? Fish? Maybe I've gone overboard with the water lilies. Whoops, things were going downhill fast for a minute there, Lara. And speaking of going downhill fast, it's time to catch up with what's happening in our neighbourhood sled event. Tanner and I are going to find out whether it's best to have a light sled or a heavy one. The empty jar can be a light sled, and the full one can be a heavy sled. We'll use these two planks as our sledding surface. And now, two chairs to give us the right slope. Now we'll make sure they're both exactly at the same angle. Let the experiment begin. Ready, set, go! Wow! The heavier jar got to the bottom of the slope first, but the lighter one rolled further. I think we're onto something here. The heavier jar goes down the slope faster because its greater weight increases the downwards force of gravity. But on the flat, its greater weight causes more friction between the jar and the snow, so the lighter jar overtakes it. I think Tanner and I have just stumbled on the race-winning strategy. Beck and I are stuck inside. We can't go out and play until we finish our homework. Mm, I'm so bored. 
At least I've got my little supply of marshmallows. Mmm, marshmallows. I wonder if Beck wants one. Psst, Beck, do you want one of my marshmallows? Here, catch! Oh no! It's gone on the floor! Let me try again. Here he goes. Oh no! This time it's gone too far! It's flown right out the door! I'm two marshmallows down and still Beck hasn't had one! There must be a way to land them on her table. I need to build a super accurate marshmallow catapult. I'm gonna need scissors, a toothpick, rubber band, sticky tape, two pencils, an empty matchbox and a milk carton. I'll just need the bottom half of the milk carton and I'm gonna cut one of the sides off, leaving a little at the bottom. This is the back of the catapult. Now I make a hole in the center of each of the two sides and one in the small tab at the back. Now I'll poke an elastic band through that hole in the back and secure it with a toothpick. One of the pencils goes through the center like this. Take the matchbox tray and cut it in half, then tape it to the end of the other pencil. This is where the marshmallows will go. Loop the elastic band around the other end of the pencil and we are ready for action. Hey Beck, I bet you can't concentrate on homework when it's raining marshmallows. Yay! Bullseye! When Jordan pushes the pencil down, the elastic band stores the energy. When he lets go, it releases the energy onto one end of the pencil, forcing it down. This levers the other end upwards, creating maximum lift for the marshmallow. Hey Beck, where are you going? She's finished her homework. Nothing to do now but finish mine. Open your mouth, Dana. Oh, darn, I missed. Which is surprising, because your mouth is really big. Oh, boys can be so silly. I'm certain Grace and her friends would agree. Somewhere in the garden jungle, Michael and Damon are hunting for spiders. But the girls and I would rather chill out and listen to the radio. Ah, that's better. We just want to relax and listen to music. Hey! What is that noise? It's coming from the radio. What could be causing it? There it is again. It's getting worse as the boys are coming closer. It's making the noise each time Michael turns that torch on. How does that torch make a noise on my radio? Hey, you guys are messing with our music. Most electrical devices give out some kind of radio waves when they are switched on or off. The sudden surging or draining of electricity through the circuits of Michael's torch disturbs the electrical and magnetic properties of the space around it. That interferes with the flow of radio waves to the girls' radio. So your torch is ruining our music. Anyway, I think your spider hunt is over. <laughs> is always jumping out and scaring me when I least expect it. She thinks it's so funny, but it drives me bonkers. I bet she wouldn't think it was so funny if I scared her. How can I get her back? Hey, I know how to make a totally horrifying, ghostly, screaming sound. I need this plastic cup, a piece of string, and a lump of the rosin violin players put on their bows. I'll make a small hole in the bottom of the cup. I'll feed the string through and tie a big knot at the end to hold it in place. There. Now I rub the rosin down the string a few times to coat in the sticky waxy stuff. Now when I run my fingers down the string, I get a horrible blood chilling ghostly scream coming from the cup. You're creepy. Uh. 
Time to freak her out with my screaming cup. I bet she's never heard anything quite like this before. <laughs> Could that be a ghost you can hear, Emily? <laughs> As Kimberly's fingers slide down the string, the sticky rosin causes vibrations which travel back up the string to the cup. The cup then begins to vibrate, making the creepy sound that Emily thinks is a ghost. Boom! <laughs> I'm the only ghost around here. Gotcha, Emily. Hmm, I think the score in the scaring each other stakes was one all. Yep, and I think we're just about to find out what the score's going to be for our sled competition. The first event is the race to the bottom of the hill. Our experiment with the jelly bean jars showed us that the heavier load gets to the bottom of the slope first. So Tanner and I are both getting on the sled. Oh, so are Gabrielle and Cheyenne. We're off. Whoa, we're winning. Whoopee. Whoops, they overturned. We were the first to the bottom of the hill. One jelly bean jar is ours. Now to win the next one. In our experiment with the jars, Tanner and I found that the lighter jar traveled further than the heavier one. So our secret strategy is a lighter load for the who gets furthest race. They're both on. Good. But this time, only I'm getting on. That'll keep our sled lighter. Oh no, Gabrielle's getting off. Looks like they've thought of the same strategy. Oh well, may the best sled win. Woo-wee! Oh no, Cheyenne's going way past me. Darn, she won the Who Gets Furthest event. Oh well, at least the lightest sled strategy worked for her too. One jar of jelly beans for us, and one for Gabrielle and Cheyenne. At least the Great Neighborhood Sled Competition ended with us all being great neighbors. Well, that's the end of the Great Neighborhood Sled Competition for another year. <laughs> it sure is. And it's also the end of another show. See, See you, you next time. time.